Next thing that we need to take a look at is uh, how am I going to produce, especially looking at the inventory uh, of finished goods. Okay, and basically I can have two options, right? I can uh, produce, make to order, which means that I'm going to wait until the the customer puts the order, and I'm going to produce uh, only the amount of finished goods uh, according to the orders that I'm receiving. That's called a make to order. Or I'm going to have a supermarket of finished good products. So I'm going to have an inventory of all my finished good products there. And so I'm going to make to that stock. And whatever the, the pace of the customer picking things from that finished good product, I will replenish uh, that inventory. Okay. So that's, that's what it called. Uh, you know, if, if I consume one item here, it's going to generate a Kanban information system to a, 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 a another process and and I'll generate and produce this product and put it back or the other option is I'm going to send this Kanban to another process step I'm not going to have much uh, inventory at the at the end just the amount that I need to ship it right and there is pros and cons of each one of those options right o both options uh, are used as uh, depending on the type of product, right? So I have to think about the strategy of make to order or make to stock, right? So make to order allowed me a lot more flexibility and customization, right? So if I'm in an environment uh, that I need highly customized uh, products, uh, each product is different, the customer can change a bunch of stuff, uh, I have a lot of variation occurring in terms of those product mix, well, make to order kind of sends, uh, 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 kind of make more sense. But then remember that your lead time will be higher as well because I'm waiting to produce when the customer put in the order, right? So it'll take a little bit of time. And also, so that lead time will be my buffer, right? I'll, I'll, I'll play with that lead time when I have more orders and less orders. Uh, if I'm going to the right here to the supermarket, make the stock is when I have a off the shelf product, right? So I produce, uh, you know, let's say couches, I produce, you know, monitors and laptops and stuff that already there, right? Already decided what to do, already decided the product, how it's gonna look like. I leave it there, whenever the customer wants, they will pick it up. So I have kind of quick delivery and I know that I always gonna have the product available. And then I'm gonna generate the product and produce them and put it back on inventory, okay? I can deal with fluctuations of, in, of demand on that with that inventory will grow more uh, and less based on those uh, fluctuations on demand. So I'm gonna use that as a buffer uh, for those uh, kind of fluctuations on demand, right? So of course, that if I have a supermarket make to stock, it's easier to deliver to the customer, it's easier to kind of protect myself from that variation, but I will have more inventory there. If I have make to order, I don't have inventory, so it's good, but it's also, you know, put a lot more pressure on my processes to respond whenever uh, uh, they need it, right? So whenever I need them, I have to be able to respond or that lead time and on-time delivery will be, uh, uh, you know, uh, will suffer there. So uh, it, that's a, a, it's a question based on the type of product that the company does and the, the, the frequency of things getting out uh, of my system. So how is the pool of the customer? How is demand variation? How is the product characteristics? I have one or the other. So if I have out off the shelf products, they're always the same. I have like 10 or 100 different uh, part numbers. They're usually the same. Use this. If I'm doing something customized with the customer signature, everything is different. Well, then you have to make to work, right? Another uh, question here is about the peacemaker. It's not the peacemaker, it's the pacemaker, right? Peacemaker is another movie there. Uh, the pacemaker is the, the process which will receive the information from what to produce, right? And this is process is very important. So to have a, 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 a truly pool system, uh, I have to have all the, all the processes linked together, right? Kanban is a way and the FIFO that we're gonna see here is another way. So if I have all process together, connected, they're all producing the same pace, how much information do I need to receive from production control or a production planning schedule? 
Well, I only need to receive one because everything else, if it's connected, everything will produce according to that information. But I need that information, right? So what happened in the first one here, right? The one at the top. We'll have a final assembly that's picking up from a Kanban and with a supermarket. So this is the symbol of a supermarket in the value tree map. This is the symbol of a pool, okay? So we'll pull supermarket, a pull supermarket. Where should I, where should I send the information? Machining, pre-assembly, final assembly. Well, we'll have to send here in final assembly, right? Because after final assembly say, oh, this is the product that we're gonna sell. These are the engines that we're gonna sell. Then they can pick up uh, the, the, the materials and do the engine that we need. And then the pre-assembly will just replenish, 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 right? And you have flow from where you receive the information. Here's working a little bit different. Here I have a make to order product that I need to receive the information here in machining because everything else is a, fo a flow, right? Everything just flow from there. So I decide the product on machining. It have a label, it have a name, it have a specific destination, and then everything else is on flow. And that's a FIFO. FIFO is another way to implement a pole system uh, where basically it works like a pipe. Imagine that you have an inventory in a pipe. So you're putting in one order, the things, it's the same order that's going out, that's one thing. And the second rule is that there is a, a limit, there's a maximum amount that will fit into that pipe. Meaning that if final assembly stops for a reason, right, stop producing, it will fill up the pipe and then pre-assembly will stop and then we'll fill the pipe and machining will stop if I don't do something, right? So I'm connecting the process. I'm not leaving one just producing regardless the other one. And these are characteristics of a pull system, right? So these were the two ways that the lean system developed to actually implement the pull system. I can have a supermarket or I can have a, a, a FIFO.